Okay, so what we're going to want to do at this point is um, create an emitter and start getting our tentacle work in here. So we're going to do one tentacle because it takes a little while to calculate them. So we'll do one, and then when we're finally happy with that system, we'll duplicate a bunch around it. And then we'll work on the interior tentacles. So what we're going to need is a sphere. Create this guy. We're not going to need many segments at all. In fact, the least amount of segments, the better. Put this to five. And that should be fine so we can actually see. All right, so I'm going to attach this to our object here. So animation, constraint, attachment constraint, and it will attach to one of these random vertices on our model. So we're just going to come down. If you go back to frame one, you'll see that face is now active. The moment you're not on frame one, you can't adjust what face this uh, uh, sphere is going to attach to. So we're just going to adjust it until get it where we want it. So it looks like one actually is going to be where we want. And at this point we can actually rotate our object. We just can't move it anymore because now it's controlled by what face it's connected to. So we'll just rotate this into position and I'm actually going to use this vertice for our emitting point. So as that continues we'll just scale this guy down. So as that animates that will keep going out like that. Perfect. Okay, so next we're going to need is a modifier or a P flow set, set up here. So we'll go into particle systems, grab a particle flow source, create this guy. I'm going to set this back to 000. zero, zero. Okay, and then we'll go into particle view. Don't have a lot of room here to work, so I'm just going to adjust my space up a little bit. Okay, so we're going to have this start at maybe minus 100 frames. We're going to want this stop. Well, we're probably going to have about 400 frames in total. So the amount of particles that are going to emit from minus 100 to 400 should be quite a bit. So we're going to set this up to about 2,000 for now. Okay. See the particles coming out there. We want to get their position. Uh, let's see. Adjust our speed a little bit. So we're going a little bit too fast here. So we're going to lower this down to about minus 4. That looks like it's going to be okay. All right. As for our shape, it looks pretty good. Our display is ticks. And we're going to need an object for these particles to emit from. So we're going to drag position object right on top of shape here. And under position object, we're just going to add, just click on our sphere. There you go, now it's emitting from our sphere. So you can kind of see what's happening here with this side, that as he animates on the outside, the particles seem to follow. You kind of get that wavy look. Okay? Okay, so now that we see that the particles are flying down from this guy, seem to be going at okay speed, we need to start getting that, get all these uh, particles to emit, not only from the sphere, but just from one vertice, so that way we get that straight line happening. So just going to go down and turn on distinct points and we're going to set this to 1. So now you can see that the animations we get this tentacle happening here. Perfect. Okay, so now to get this tentacle working a little bit better, we wanted to kind of always have some motion. So right here where the our object is static, you can see over time Particles don't really do much, they just kind of go down, but this water, even though it's going to be very calming water, we still need a little bit of movement. It also gives it some good secondary as well, so what we're going to do is add in some gravity. So we'll go into our force, our motion here, sorry, our space warps, and we're going to grab gravity. Let's create this guy. I like to set my nose back to zero, 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 just keep things clean. And I'm going to pull them out just a little bit and set gravity to the side. So to help explain what I'm trying to do here is when we actually watch our jellyfish, he's actually going up in our axis, not uh, kind of on a diagonal. It's actually going to be our camera that's rotated, so our final animation is going to be like this. So that's why I'm going to have the gravity on the side like that. So I'll just rotate this back. 
So if gravity just kind of has like a noise controller between its strength going from forward and back, we'll kind of get that wavy motion that we're looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and find a space warp and link this to our particle flow here. All right, so I'm going to go back into our particle source, open up our view, and I'm going to add in a force. It's up top. All right, and from here I can add by list or just click add. Just move this side here. All right, so now we have our gravity, and the moment I clicked on that, you can see that gravity is now affecting our object. All right, so what we're going to do is just work with some uh, objects inside our gravity field here. And we're just going to lower our strength way down. So as I lower the strength, you can see that it's being affected less and less and less. So it looks like we're going to be working in some really small numbers here. So in order to get this to work, we're going to, to animate over time. Instead of animating it by hand, we're going to add a noise modifier or controller to our strength. To do that, we're going to go to our graph editor, curve editor. this down give us some room here so under gravity we'll just move down and under object gravity we'll find strength so it's in strength is this number here and we also can see decay and icon size so what we're going to do is right click on strength a little bit of a lag issue going on here so just click on assign controller on the right Try that again. And you're going to choose noise float. So the moment we choose noise float, we have a bit of an example of what's going to happen over time here. We have fractal noise set up, and we have a few options. So if I adjust the strength, you can see the limits of the number. So over time, it will sometimes almost, like from here, here's 1 and negative 1. It will go to 0.5, and then it's going to come down to negative 2. And you can see actually it's changing a lot over time. Between just 30 frames, we've gone from our max and mins like five times. So if we adjust the frequency, we can lower that down quite a bit. And so since we want some nice calm water, we want it to kind of hit its extreme values over a less amount of time. I'll just change the seeds here, trying to get something a little, that looks a little better. I do like like hitting an arc here, you know, at some points, but I don't like to see it happen often. So just we want we can lower the strength and this will be how calm the water is how much we're actually moving the object okay so we'll, we'll call that okay for now we'll see what's happening out here so it looks like our strength is just a bit too much and we can actually watch and see what our frequency looks like yeah i think even our frequency will be a bit much it can almost see what the wave looks like on the side this almost represents exactly what we see in our curve editor so our strength is just a little bit too high. So we'll go into our curve editor. With gravity selected. Okay, we can right click on strength again. And we'll just go down to properties this time. And from here we can adjust what we have. So looks like one is a bit much, but even where we are is, is going to be a bit much as well. So we're going to maybe cut this down down to like 0 0.3 or 0 0.4, somewhere around there. Let's see what happens here. Okay, it looks like we're still affecting a bit too much. This is such a, a small object at this point. Um, if for some reason your numbers aren't matching up with mine, it just means that your, your original object was built at a much larger scale. So we're working with small numbers here. We could essentially uh, scale this whole object up and that would affect this as well. Getting a bit of an issue here trying to, oh, it's right clicking on gravity. Okay, so it looks like even less than that, down to like 0 0.2. And I was noticing there that our frequency was a bit much too. So I'll just pull that out in half as well. So let's see what we have at this point.
So what you want to do is kind of cut it in half where you think the particle is going to end and then kind of watch at this point. So right here is as far as our tentacle is going to go. And see how we're kind of getting that secondary happening on our gravity right here? So it's pushed in, but kind of gets pushed in a little bit too far. So I'm just going to pause the video and find the happy medium between the gravity and our frequency, and now we'll come back.